Next, next process for production of uh, free hydrogen um, is uh, the Stan Meyer patent. Here, um, a lot of people have uh, not understood really what Stan was doing. He says a method for obtaining the release of a fuel gas, including hydrogen and oxygen, from water in which the water is processed as a dielectric medium in a, an electrical resonant circuit. Okay, next. And he shows the cell here, which is basically uh, consists of, um, of, of concentric cylinders. And this, this uh, but here's the circuit and uh, basically there's really not much to it. He's saying he's putting 50% uh, duty cycles um, pulses into um, this uh, transformer and, and, and uh, creating um, pulses that are going to go into the um, fuel cell, which he's uh, designing to be a capacitor. Now, um, the, fa the, the obvious problem with this situation is this. He's um, uh, he's using the word resonant here, like salt and pepper all the way through. This is not a resonant circuit. This was part of the diversion about how to keep people from, how to, how to protect the idea without actually leading people to understand what was going on. And uh, the proof uh, that this is not a resonant circuit lies in the blocking diode. Oh, gosh. So um, what you can see here is what he's really doing is this. Um, this system works without electrolytes, so the, the purpose of it is he wants his water to have a, a fairly high resistance in it. Um, and so here's what he's going to do. He's got these um, chokes. These chokes are very important because when he puts these inductive spikes on here and blocks them with the diode, what he's doing is he's charging this capacitor. And um, uh, the, the resonant chokes are specifically to damp the, the uh, voltage spikes that could um, prematurely set this thing off. So what he's doing is he's making sure that he can charge this capacitor with kind of soft pulses and pulse the thing up so um, he can get this capacitor to charge to the maximum degree before the dielectric material, in this case water, creates a catastrophic dielectric failure in the capacitor, at which point all the charge in the capacitor, is, all the voltage in the capacitor is converted to amps as it shorts out internally and utterly destroys the water it moves through and creates massive quantities of hydrogen and oxygen. As soon as it's out of the way, water rushes back in, the dielectric uh, constant is, is again reestablished and this is what happens, while that's happening, he waits and starts charging again. Go ahead, go to the next. Again, these, these types of drawings were used to confuse people. This, um, you know, the, the idea of drawing these things is if these are increasingly large, resonant, you know, pulses and everything. This is all a, a bunch of hooey. All he's doing is, just like any other um, voltage a multiplier that's used in pulses, all you're looking at is a step ramp charge on the capacitor until it reaches catastrophic failure. That is the method of the Stan Meyer uh, system and uh, it does produce massive amounts of gas for very small amounts of electricity in. Uh, to uh, just reiterate that, Stan Meyer, of course, is now dead, but his brother-in-law went up to Canada and started a new company called Exogen, where they have uh, gotten a new patent and um, are moving forward very rapidly on the commercialization of this technology. Here's their website, exogen.com. And um, you can see here Exogen's um, process, most significant promise is that it will make it economical for hydrogen to replace carbon-based fuels and could conceivably reduce atmospheric pollution to a fraction of what it is today, et cetera, et cetera. Go ahead to the next thing. And here in the little uh, frequently asked questions, we look at question number one, what is the Exogen technology? Uh, Exogen Power Incorporated um, applied for worldwide patents based on the results of research which discovered a breakthrough technology that separates water into usable hydrogen and oxygen with a modest electrical input. 
The gases are generated on demand at the point required, which eliminates storage and provides transportable uh, method of hydrogen generation. So again, uh, here's a new company moving forward with the same basic technology. Uh, it will, uh, 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 will Exogen provide full disclosure of the technology? Eh, no, we won't. But it um, doesn't matter. I just did. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, this technology is real, guys. Um, you know, all the chemistry books which say it takes, you know, more electricity to uh, crack water than uh, you can get out of it. Throw that book in the furnace and get some free BTUs out of it. <laughs> free energy. So basically, um, the, the methods for what we call super efficient electrolysis, which can create unlimited amounts of free hydrogen for fuel. Uh, we've got four known methods. There probably are more. First one is Friedman's chemiloy. It absolutely works. Um, uh, the second one is the, the Meyer exogen process, where you um, use the electrolysis cell as a capacitor, which you charge until you reach a catastrophic breakdown of the dielectric material at which point your voltage is converted to amperage and you get a gigantic uh, blast of gas and you can repeat this many times a second. Um, and again, uh, it, it goes back to Gray, it goes back to Tesla, it goes back to all of these things that the, the way into these free energy systems is a unidirectional application of voltage which then resolves as a free energy impulse of currents. This is exactly what's going on in the Meyer system. It's all unidirectional um, impulses. Um, the, sec the third way, again, um, and uh, uh, Bill Mueller is doing this. Um, he's got his uh, no-back EMF generators uh, sitting on a big engine, uh, which only take a few horsepower to turn it. He's taking all the electricity from that, creating hydrogen enough to run the engine, and plus the, the big loads. Uh, they're doing that uh, at the industrial level. And um, of course, you can uh, also uh, take all your outputs from a uh, permanent magnet transformer and dump that into an electrolysis cell of any, uh, any type you want and make free hydrogen. And uh, also uh, Bedini's uh, system where we showed that he was uh, pulsing the, the, the light bulb when he was uh, charging his battery. If you put an electrolysis cell in that zone, you can make hydrogen while you're charging your battery. Go ahead. Okay, let's talk a little bit about emerging markets. There are free energy systems that are reaching the market today. Um, and uh, as long as we uh, get off this conspiracy thing and get off our ideas that uh, this is a suppressed uh, technology, things are changing in the world and um, it's time for us to change with them. The emerging markets include, um, if you've got a, a mining operation out in the middle of Brazil, and uh, nobody really knows what you're doing. Um, believe me, if you put a free energy generator up there, um, nobody's going to know. Talk about the conspiracy thing and all the political. I didn't really realize how political this really was. Uh, this morning on the way over here, I heard on the news uh, about the Kyoto Treaty on global warming and how Bush refused to sign it. Um, of course, we know what kind of financial interest Bush has. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, how, how are we going to get past that kind of uh, politics with stuff like this? We're, we're, we're not going to ask them for permission. If we don't ask, they can't say no. Absolutely. It, it's, it's easier to ask for forgiveness than for permission, really. Um, so, um, uh, remote, remote mining sites, uh, remote uh, things, uh, oil companies are actually um, uh, going with uh, uh, big power plants um, uh, based on Mueller systems uh, where they're running the, uh, the onboard um, electric generation on, uh, oil, you know, on big oil platforms and stuff. Instead of actually running them on petroleum, they're running them on, on uh, super electrolysis. Um, these things are going in now. Um, don't expect the government to uh, uh, sanction this. 
this is all under the rug. Um, it's happening, but the government cannot uh, admit it's happening, but they're not going to stop it anymore. If you've got an off-grid home site that's running on uh, uh, solar or wind power or mini hydro right now, you can easily put one of these systems behind all that, and as long as you've got a windmill sitting in your yard, who cares what, how you're really getting your electricity. And um, uh, these types of things are uh, ready to go right now. You could stick a Bedini battery charger in there and charge your batteries all night, and we, we call that the midnight solar technique. 